and the focus on that funeral for presidents, 1,500 guests, all descending on St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston to say goodbye to former First Lady Barbara Bush. We are going to take you there. Then to Utah and the focus on a key Republican convention going on for that state. Mitt Romney facing his first big test in the race for Orrin Hatch's Senate seat with 11 other candidates. To put it mildly, it is crowded, and for Mitt Romney, it could get nasty, very nasty. But then to Washington, where the wagon may be circling around, fired FBI Director James Comey and his number two guy for leaking. All while there are signs the Russia collusion probe could be unraveling. And look who is freezing missile testing. Will this help convince some Senate uh, opponents that Michael Pompeo is indeed good to go for Secretary of State? Cavuto Live starts now. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto, and we've got a busy two hours in front of it. Uh, so let's get to it right now. Uh, the world reacting to Kim Jong blinking? Hard to say, but this much we do know. He has made some remarkable concessions over the last 24 hours that have surprised even those who claim to know him best. In a dramatic about face, he has changed his mind on a couple of key developments that used to be ironclad. We're going to get to all of that right now with Jillian Turner in Washington with the very latest. Jillian. Hi, Neil. So in a dramatic turnaround, North Korea's state-run news agency has issued a statement reading in part, from April 21, North Korea will stop nuclear tests and launches of intercontinental ballistic missiles. The North will shut down a nuclear test site in the country's northern side to guarantee transparency in suspending these nuclear tests. And then just hours ago, new reports surfacing that during Mike Pompeo's clandestine meeting with Kim over Easter, the dictator floated the possibility of releasing three long-held American detainees as part of the pending sit-down with President Trump. The president himself weighing in earlier with a tweet reads, quote, North Korea has agreed to suspend all nuclear tests and close up a major test site. This is very good news for North Korea and the world. Big progress. Looking forward to our summit. So this morning, all signs pointing to go for a Trump-Kim summit. And things are also looking up for the Trump administration's plan to try and stike, strike a deal that no American president has yet been able to do successfully. These developments all come just six days before Kim is slated to meet with his South Korean counterpart, President Moon, and weeks before his highly anticipated face-off with the American POTUS. This past week here in Washington, talk of North Korea was dominated by the politics surrounding CIA Director Pompeo's pending confirmation as Secretary of State. Well, the math's still out on that. Should he continue to produce results like the ones coming to light this morning, the tables on Capitol Hill may very well turn in his favor. Neil? All right, Julian, thank you very, very much. Uh, let's get a read on all this with Senate Foreign Relations Committee member, Democratic Senator from the beautiful state of Maryland, Ben Cardin. Senator, thank you for taking the time. Neil, it's good to be with you. Thank um, you. Let me get your take on this. Uh, uh, you know, Michael Pompeo uh, had this meeting w with the North Korean leader at this delicate time, a lot of people say, given that meeting and, and given the fact that apparently he might have extracted some early concessions or at least early negotiating concessions with President Trump, now is not the time to, to muck around with his Secretary of State uh, confirmation. What do you think of that? Well, Neil, first, I think we're all pleased to see progress in regards to diplomacy with North Korea. We obviously need to verify what, what, what Kim Jong-un is saying. But I strongly supported uh, the diplomacy and the president scheduling a, a meeting with Kim Jong-un. I also supported the fact that he sent a cabinet secretary uh, to meet with him ahead of time, the CIA director. I think that all that is very positive news. As it relates to Mr. Pompeo's uh, confirmation uh, uh, support, recognize that many of us are concerned that when he's in those meetings, the fact that he believes that it is okay for the United States to walk away from an Iran agreement, uh, even if Iran is in compliance, will weigh in the discussions as to whether there can be uh, reliability in entering into an agreement with America. So that's going to be an issue that I think will come up, but I think we're all very pleased about the progress that has been made in North Korea, but we do need verifications. Are you still, as things stand now, Senator Inova? 
Now, I announced my, 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 the fact that I will not support his nomination it has to do with, with many different reasons. Uh, we, we will have a vote in the Senate, I, I believe, this week. Uh, and my expectation is it will be on the floor of the Senate later this week. All right, if I can switch gears and get to, uh, apparently James Comey has a book out, and uh, what's come up in this and a little back and forth with his former number two, Annie McCabe, is that someone might not be telling the truth. Uh, are you concerned that between Mr. Comey and Mr. McCabe, uh, there's a serious question about the veracity of what either of them is saying? Yeah, my only concern is that Mr. Mueller be able to complete his work, and he can do that as quickly as possible. Let it lead where it may. I don't give a, a lot of weight to some of the specific issues that have been uh, made available to the public, including Mr. Comey's book. That, that's, that's issues that are sort of distracting from the underlining commitment we all need to make to allow Mr. Mueller to complete his investigation. Uh, don't interfere with him. Don't interfere with Mr. Rosenstein. Let's get the job done. Senator, uh, apparently Red Rosenstein, the, the Deputy Attorney General, met with the President last week, and we are told, even though no one has confirmed this, that he told the President for the second time, I believe in as many months, you are not the focus of, uh, uh, or the target of this investigation, this Bob Mueller investigation. Do you believe that? I have confidence in Mr. Rosenstein. I have confidence in Mr. Mueller. I want both of them to be able to do their jobs. I think the fewer comments we made about we make about conclusions, the better off we are. Give them the space they need to complete this very important investigation. Is it your sense then, sir, that uh, you know, people have looked at this and, and wondered where the investigation is going and where, not post the raid of the president's lawyer's office and home, uh, that it was veering in a very, very different direction. Is it your sense that it is that this is now way beyond talk of collusion to maybe other business matters? Well, I, I, look, I'm, I don't know exactly how all these things come out, but I know when you start an investigation, it leads to other matters that are referred out for separate investigation. It appears like that was what was done in regards to um, uh, Mr. Trump's attorney. It was being handled by uh, the, uh, the uh, prosecutor in New York. It's a separate issue. Uh, that obviously needs to be completed. Uh, and we should let prosecutors do their independent investigations under the appropriate supervision, and that's what has been done here. Um, whatever these developments and what you make of them, sir, uh, a lot of people have, have commented that there's little reason for the time being for the president to even entertain firing uh, Mr. Mueller or, for that matter, Rod Rosenstein. In fact, that was an issue that I raised with Mitch McConnell, uh, the Senate leader, who told me that he was against this effort uh, uh, on the part of maybe yourself and some of your colleagues. To, to guarantee his job and to keep him in that job and protect it. Um, according to Mitch McConnell, uh, for, the president isn't going to fire him. And even if that legislation you know, were approved, it, the president would hardly sign off on it. Your thoughts on that? Well, I, I've said for several months, considering the comments that have come out, uh, that it would have been much better for us to make it clear that we protect the integrity of the investigation. I know there was bipartisan support on the Judiciary Committee by the chairman and ranking member to look at legislation that would do exactly that. I thought that was the prudent course for us to take. The uh, Republican leader has made it clear that he supports uh, the Mueller and, and Rosenstein remaining in office. He doesn't believe the president is going to do anything to, to stop that. And that's why he's not bringing the legislation to the floor. I disagree with him, but I think we're all in agreement that we need to allow Mr. Rosenstein to remain in, in his position without intimidation and Mr. Mueller to complete his investigation. Do you have any doubt that that would happen anyway? I never like to predict what the President of the United States will do because he has surprised me many, many times. I can tell you this. If he takes steps to dismiss Mr. Rosenstein or Mr. Mueller, I think many of us on both sides of the aisle would consider him crossing the line and interfering in the investigation. Um, there are reports that Jeff Sessions would quit if Rosenstein were fired. Do you believe that? I think that that is certainly a possibility. Uh, uh, I've disagreed with Attorney General Sessions, but he has been very clear about the conflict here and about his support for Mr. Rosenstein and that this investigation needs to proceed without the interference of the White House. 
Um, elsewhere, sir, on this spending measure, this $1.3 trillion spending measure, as you recall, the president was very critical of it, uh, blamed Democrats and Republicans for it. Um, Mitch McConnell seemed to chafe at that and said that the president, or at least his people, must have known what was in there, uh, and everyone agreed to it, whatever the criticisms. Uh, what do you make of that and the president's move to rescind a lot of that spending? Mitch McConnell is against it. Are you? Uh, I, I am too. I'm against the rescission. I, I, there are things in that agreement I'd like to have seen handled differently, but it, it did follow what I think is the process we should use in the Congress, and that is working together, Democrats and Republicans, and getting things done. That's exactly what we did on, on the omnibus bill. The president's team was part of those negotiations. I understand there are times where the president and his team are on different, on different uh, plateaus as to what is happening in Congress. But that uh, omnibus bill represented, I think, the best process that we have. Democrats and Republicans, our committees working together and getting results for the American people. It's good for the opioid crisis, uh, responding to that. It, it's good for so many different issues, for infrastructure in this country, for funding our agencies. We did the right thing. Senator Cardin, thank you very much. Very good seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Nuita, we are looking live in Houston. A guest are going to be arriving and have been arriving uh, for uh, former First Lady Barbara Bush's formal funeral. Mike Emanuel is there with the very, very latest. Hey, Mike. Neil, good morning to you. We are seeing some early arrivals for First Lady Barbara Bush's funeral, uh, including actor Chuck Norris. Uh, we're trying to identify some of the other folks who are here, but with t uh, security extremely tight and 1,500 guests, obviously it takes time to get them all here to St. Martin's Church. Among the dignitaries we'll be seeing here today, uh, former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, uh, Chelsea Clinton, Caroline Kennedy, the daughters of former Presidents Lyndon Baines Johnson, Richard Nixon, and of course Gerald Ford, and Texas Governor Greg Abbott. There was a touching moment yesterday when we're told President George Herbert Walker Bush and his daughter Doro spontaneously decided to surprise folks who were paying their respects to Mrs. Bush. They shook hands with the well-wishers, and it gave people an opportunity to express their condolences directly to the Bush family. Barbara Bush was just the greatest woman in my opinion. She was our shining star. Pay our respects to a woman who uh, influenced many lives, myself, my wife, our family. We just came out to support her and to let them, the Bush family know that, you know, we're here for them and that we support them. There will be three eulogies delivered in the approximately 90-minute funeral service, one from her son Jeb Bush, the former Florida governor. We understand Mrs. Bush selected Jeb to do that eulogy on behalf of the family. Uh, there will undoubtedly be some tears and some laughter as Ms. Mrs. Bush was known for her great sense of humor and wit. The other two eulogies will be delivered by a very close personal friend and a historian. Neil. Mike, thank you very, very much. Uh, as we uh, back and forth through the next two hours, uh, head back to Houston, there's a beautiful sort of retrospective look at the First Lady uh, from no less than Peggy Noonan, writing in today's Wall Street Journal what her life spanned. As a child, she used to see a young pilot named Amelia Earhart, who briefly lived nearby. She was scared by the kidnapping of the Lindbergh baby. She saw the Hindenburg over Long Island Sound. She lived through World War II as a Navy wife was a participant in history from China during Mao through the fall of the Berlin Wall. She was part of the whole shebang. A little more to this. Tomorrow, it's a day filled with promise and new beginnings, challenges and opportunities. At Ameriprise Financial, we can't predict what tomorrow will bring, but our comprehensive approach to financial planning can help make sure you're prepared for what's expected and even what's not. And that kind of financial confidence can help you sleep better at night. With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. After my DVT blood clot, I had a lot on my mind. Could this happen again? Was my warfarin treatment right for me? My doctor told me about Eliquis. Eliquis treats DVT and PE blood clots and reduces the risk of them happening again. Not only does Eliquis treat DVT and PE blood clots, Eliquis also had significantly less major bleeding than the standard treatment. Eliquis had both, and that turned around my thinking. Don't stop Eliquis unless your doctor tells you to. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding.
If you had a spinal injection while on Eliquis, call your doctor right away if you have tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. While taking Eliquis, you may bruise more easily, and it may take longer than usual for bleeding to stop. Seek immediate medical care for sudden signs of bleeding, like unusual bruising. Eliquis may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Both made Eliquis right for me. Ask your doctor if switching to Eliquis is right for you. I'm Jillian, and I have a confession to make. I may have been a little tough in my past. Down! Up! Go! Go! But now I've found my bubbly side with Soda Street, the effortless way to stop addiction to sugary soda. Just slip in a bottle of regular tap water, a quick push, and in seconds, plain boring water is sparkling. Add a little fruit drop flavor, and boom, a sparkling treat you'll want to drink. With soda, with Soda Stream. Available at GetSodaStream.com or at these fine retailers. Why is Old Dominion number one in customer satisfaction? Maybe it's OD's over 99% on time rate, or our decades of supply chain experience that support the dynamic digital marketplace, or because when we promise something, we keep our promise. The reason OD is number one in customer satisfaction is our people who never stop working to make your shipping easier. Old Dominion, helping the world keep promises. Prudential asked these couples, how much money do you think you'll need in retirement? Then we found out how many years that money would last them. How long do you think we'll keep... Oh, 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 oh. you're going to leave me back here in year nine? How did this happen? <laughs> it turned out a lot of people fell short of even the average length of retirement. We have to think about not when we expect to live to, but when we could live to. Let's plan for income that lasts all our years of retirement. Prudential, bring your challenges. All right, uh, right now the scene in Houston as we uh, prepare to say goodbye uh, to Barbara Bush today. I'm reminded again, I hate to keep mentioning it, but it's a beautiful piece by Peggy Noonan, today's Wall Street Journal, looking back at what she calls the great first spouse. Uh, she said of Barbara Bush that uh, she was beautiful. She had no physical vanity and, in fact, mocked her looks. The strings of pearls were to hide her neck wrinkles. When her hair turned white, it turned white. But the bones on her face were strong and delicate, and her eyes sparkled. It is that sparkle, it is that life, it is that take me as I am that has captivated a nation these last couple of days. We have sadly had to share the news that the, the former First Lady, Barbara Bush, is gone. But clearly, uh, in this crowd of luminaries, 1,500 strong in this Houston church, not forgotten. We will be taking you there throughout this broadcast, and of course, uh, beginning at noon with Shepard Smith and my other colleagues. In the meantime, focusing on the political developments that now Barbara Bush has left uh, and departed from this world, the Justice Department's Inspector General is now reportedly probing whether Jim Comey's memos themselves contain classified information. Of course, this after the same IG had recommended of Andrew McCabe, a federal prosecutor, to look in, into uh, lying and whether that would be a a criminal act. Now again, each time you lie to a federal investigator, and he lied at least three times according to the IG, um, that, could, that, that could put you in the slammer for five years. Uh, technically he lied four times according to the investigation, but three times to investigators. Anyway, the read on all this, to House Judiciary Committee member, Florida Republican Congressman Ron DeSantis. Congressman, thank you for coming. Good morning. Where do you think this IG investigation should go? It's going to be in the hands of a of a, a Donald Trump appointee to decide whether to act on that criminal referral, uh, do you think she should? Well, look, here with, with respect to Andrew McCabe, I mean, you have a situation, Neil, the average American, if they were to lie to the FBI, and we see that a little in the Mueller investigation with people like Mike Flynn, I mean, the FBI won't hesitate to nail them to the wall for that. And so you have somebody like McCabe, who's the deputy director, lying to the FBI. Is there two sets of standards, or is this something where we're all under the same laws? And so, you know, I think that McCabe case is absolutely live for criminal uh, referral. Uh, I was involved in 
helping with that out of the Congress as well. And then with respect to Jim Comey, I mean, look, the leaking of those memos was malicious even apart from classified information. That was government information. Those were conversations he had based on his position with the president. Um, and the fact that two of the memos had classified information, uh, I think Comey has a lot of exposure here. Um, I think this book tour has been an absolute disaster. And I think all of this has really blown up in his face. But, but Neil, it's not just the memos that Comey, I think, may be in trouble for. Remember, he testified in front of Congress that he did not make the decision to exonerate Hillary till after he interviewed her. Well, subsequent oversight uh, by Congress uh, found those mem memos that he wrote two months before uh, he interviewed her, where, he, where he, they were exonerating her. So there's been a lot of things with his testimony, too, that have conflicted with subsequent facts. So I think he's in some danger here. Um, separately, you want to go back to Andy McCabe for a second. Congressman, as you know, he's suing the Trump administration for defamation, wrongful termination. Uh, the DNC is, it seems to be suing, um, well, everybody um, the, the, from the president on down. Where are all these legal back and forths going? I mean, it seems to me those are frivolous. I mean, McCabe was terminated on the recommendation of the inspector general. Uh, that was totally legitimate. And what the DNC is doing, it seems like they realize that the whole Russia collusion angle has petered out. Uh, there's not been evidence of collusion with Trump's campaign. And so I think they're doing everything they can to just resuscitate the narrative, throw as much against the wall as they can and hope something sticks. But I don't think it's going to work. You know, Rod Rosenstein apparently told uh, the deputy attorney general the president last week i think last thursday so it would have been after the michael cohen office raid that the president was not a target of the investigation no one from his office has confirmed what was originally a bloomberg report but do you believe that well, here's the thing, Neil. Uh, you can say someone's not a target. That 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 is something that is very fluid. Um, I have a lot of problems with how that Cohen raid was done. That was hyper aggressive, and if the underlying offense is some campaign finance violation, I think that was way overboard for that. And here's, I think, the thing that bothers a lot of Americans is that level of zealousness. You didn't see that at all when the FBI and uh, Obama's DOJ was investigating Hillary uh, for the classified information in her email server. I mean, in fact, they weren't even doing subpoenas, using grand juries. Right. Uh, they were doing immunity. So, you know, is it are we going to apply the law equally or not? All right, Congressman, thank you very, very much. What if I told you that your money is at stake, depending on how that investigation ensues? And we have the proof tick by tick this week after this. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia invites the world to witness history. Seven championships will be defended, including a universal title match inside a steel cage. Plus, The Undertaker, Rusev, in a casket match. John Cena and Triple H go one-on-one. -on -one. And 50 men, one ring. The greatest Royal Rumble ever. Well done, everyone. Here's to our 50th client. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Cover the computers. Hello, the Hartford. Hi, I've got a lot of water damage here at my business. Am I covered? Yes, don't worry. You chose the right small business insurance. When the unexpected strikes, the Hartford strikes back. It's why over one million small businesses and their agents trust the Hartford. Thank you. You haven't seen it all until you've seen it in HD Vision. HD Vision RX, full featured prescription lenses. Now at Walmart Vision Centers. Digitally surfaced for faster focusing, scratch resistant coating, glare reducing, and blue light blocking to reduce eye strain for pure, vivid, detail rich vision. Seven advanced lens enhancements, all for one low price. HD Vision RX, exclusively at Walmart Vision Centers. the Blackstone Griddle. Outdoor cooking without the compromise. Log on now to BlackstoneProducts.com.
an extraordinary life, an iconic first lady. As Barbara Bush is laid to rest, Shepard Smith anchors live coverage today as the country remembers Barbara Bush. The sun used to make our outdoor deck and patio space so hot and uncomfortable, we couldn't use it. But then we discovered the Sunsetter Retractable Awning. Our Sunsetter Retractable Awning opens and closes in just 60 seconds. It keeps our patio about 20 degrees cooler. It provides instant shade and instant protection from the sun's harmful rays. And our Sunsetter costs under $700. But now you can get your Sunsetter for as little as $599 when you call now to get this special $200 discount certificate and free awning idea kit. We love our Sunsetter Retractable Awning, and you're going to love yours too. Sunsetter awnings are assembled in America and guaranteed to last for years. So call now to get this free awning idea kit with DVD plus your $200 Sunsetter discount certificate. But this is a limited time offer. Call now. Call now for your free awning idea kit with DVD and $200 discount certificate. There's no obligation. You know, I, I do want to focus on the markets and how they respond to political developments in Washington. It does happen a lot. And, and what's interesting is earlier in the week when we got wind of this report that Rod Rosenstein had met with the president to say, you, sir, are not the target of this Bob Mueller investigation. Uh, well, the markets was already down, for example, that day over 200 points, have the losses. Now, uh, it continues a pattern we've seen, and this is very, very similar to the one we saw during uh, the Bill Clinton impeachment period, that the worst things look for Bill Clinton then, the worst things look for Donald Trump now, stocks sell off. Uh, the better it looked for uh, Bill Clinton and, and surviving that then, and the better it looks for Donald Trump surviving whatever comes of this now, uh, stocks do very, very well. Now, you could argue that in both periods, then as now, markets are doing fine, the economy's on fire. Uh, these guys who are not red or blue, they're green, they just love money and making it. They don't want anything to disrupt that. So what's the make of what's going on now in this tick for tick movement to all things uh, political? Let's go to Fox Business's Deirdre Bolton. We've got uh, Fox uh, contributors, uh, John Layfield and Jessica Darloff. Uh, Jessica, what do you make of that? There's an uncanny connection. There is an uncanny connection, which a few people have mentioned since we love to talk about Bill Clinton during the Trump era. Um, I the uncertainty thing we've been following, though, throughout all of the Trump presidency, though, that it goes up and down and it comes in waves. And it makes sense, certainly. Rod Rosenstein coming out and telling Donald Trump that, I know you were talking about that with uh, Congressman DeSantis in the last segment, which means he said today Trump isn't a target of this. Tomorrow may be a whole new story. Yeah, we don't since, know. And we don't even know whether that conversation actually took place. But, right, which but, is an amazing thing yeah. and comes with all of this. Um, but. It, it does make sense to me. It's in principle that it yeah. would be following this. And if you feel like you're safe for a moment, then it's going to be good for the market. But that could turn on a dime. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, on a trillion dollars, the market yeah. <laughs> worth can go up or down. Because markets are bore uncertainty. And also, they don't want anything disrupted right. and, and that's going on right now. And they like what's going on right now. They do like what's going on right now. So there are these, let's just say, political, potential political upsets that we all seem to be moving on every 15 minutes. But then there's been some fundamental news. I mean, not to sort of bring it back to, to specific market points, but I know Morgan Stanley put out that note, right, on, on Apple saying, oh, maybe iPhone sales uh, are not going to be that great in the June quarter. So there, there are also, clearly other factors. There are other, other, other factors. Way. We were talking about 10-year yields, right, being at the highest level since 2014. There are some just market fundamentals that are shifting, but then when you add in this extra spice of political volatility, then, yeah, you do get a market that all of a sudden in the last hour loses a lot of steam. You know, I've done late field. I, I always say when you look at the environment in which, uh, you know, things get nasty or, you know, or investigations are ensuing with a president of any party, that that backdrop for Richard Nixon, for example, was awful. You had soaring energy and oil prices. You had, you know, uh, the economy tanking into a recession. And that backdrop didn't help his cause. Now, I'm not saying that that, you know, he wouldn't have been threatened to be impeached or, or thrown out of office either way. But the backdrop didn't help. The backdrop now is very, very different. The backdrop for Bill Clinton at, at the time of his investigations, very, very different. And I think that comes into play here. Do you think Wall Street, regardless of where this is going, they want Donald Trump to stick around. They like him. I think they do because he's been very good for the markets. And you mentioned uh, President Clinton. The market sold off initially. Then they rallied significantly after that during that impeachment affair. Same thing happened with Andrew Johnson. It sold off initially. The other president impeached and it rallied back. I think Watergate I and Iran Andrew two. Johnson. And that was a, that was a touch and go <laughs> thing, buddy. I remember that vividly. <laughs>
right, I guess not. <laughs> they never planned on him being president. They put him in to win the South and they end up with this guy for that, that they really didn't want, Andrew well, Johnson. There you go. But, there you go. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, finish I, look, I, I think... I think that the market wants President uh, Tr Trump to stay in. I think President Trump will. It's almost impossible to impeach a president. You can you can impeach him, but you can't convict him. It takes two thirds of the Senate to do that. I don't think that's even uh, within the realm of possibility right here. I think it's all about the market right here. We could be at th uh, three point something percent unemployment rate, but the lowest in 50 years. If that's the case, history could change, and the Republicans could do decent in the midterms. Um, you know, I don't know where this whole investigation goes, Jessica. I just you know just, it's impossible to keep track of the lawsuits and the yeah. filings. And you do this and you do that. Now the Democratic Party's uh, suing everybody. And Anna McCabe is suing the president for defamation. And a lot of Republicans are calling for another investigation of those who were originally investigating. So I can't keep track of it. But I do wonder, um, post-November, uh, what we're looking at here. And, and it, it, does it get to be... Just more investigations, let's say Democrats take the House, and the markets in that uncertainty, and we'll get into this, just go crazy. Well, I don't know. If, if you follow what Republicans are now using as their main line of argumentation to win in November, they're going the impeachment route, that we need to make sure that we keep the House because Democrats are going to be gunning for President Trump at that point. Well, Ted they're also Cruz's raising that Nancy Pelosi, she wants to deep yeah, six the tax cuts. They are right? doing that, but because the tax cuts are not as popular as they expected them to be, the new Wall Street Journal NBC poll shows that, there has been a new line here where they are, they're obviously making an economic argument and they're saying a lot of the things that John did about how well the market, uh, the economy is doing but they are going for this impeachment angle. And if you saw Mitch McConnell said to Paul Ryan, I don't know if we want to pass more tax cuts, actually, because if Dems vote for that, then they're going to get some credit for it. So there is, you know, yeah, what they argument, thought was going to the save them. In the Senate, he's worried about that because he's focused on the Senate keeping that majority yeah. where, where they could boost, the Republicans could boost. Yes, they could. I mean, there yeah. are 10 Democrat senators in right. deep red states. All right. Uh, you know, we don't know how that would all play out, but but your thoughts? We don't know, but there is this PR war, and I know you were in D.C. for tax day. President Trump wrote an op-ed style piece in USA Today. So I think both sides, both parties are clearly trying to show either why tax cuts are great, as the president laid out, or why tax cuts are benefiting the rich and corporations and the trickle-down effect will never work, right? So you have uh, big voices on both camps really trying to gin up this language ahead of the midterms. I am still watching fundamentals, Neil, you're going to like get the hook. But even know. even trade, you know, in that Friday session, we heard a federal governor, uh, Fed governor come out and say, hey, if there's a trade war, you know, don't forget this. Um, that's going to be bad for our markets. And Absolutely. Our economy. And so, a lot of goods and services go rocketing up in price. So as usual, we have the politicians who are kind of fighting. And then on a side track, we have very basic economic and fundamental corporate fundamental underpinnings that are also kind of chugging along. So I just sort of feel like it's cooking, it's cooking, and then you just throw on more gas with all the, the political... Uh, and then you have the North Korean thing, right, John Layfield? I mean, uh, there's no way to factor in. We've got a deal and broker an agreement that calls for him to denuke and all that. How do you think that's going to be received? It would be certainly unprecedented. And, of course, he would have to stick to that deal. And, of course, his father and grandfather weren't known for doing that kind of thing. But what do you think? I think it's the black swan. I think that's the one thing that could swing the midterm elections. But if you get something historic done like that, the, the income, the president's party has lost 35 of 38 uh, midterm elections. They've lost seats in the House. So history right. is against incumbents. And there's an incumbent, anti-incumbent wave right across the northern hemisphere right now. I think something if the North Korea uh, deal gets done, and I think if the economy continues to do well and unemployment gets lower, they could change that. But uh, otherwise, right. I think it's going to be a bloodbath in the midterms. All right, we'll see. Uh, thank you, guys. In the in the meantime, uh, Mitt Romney, we want to take your attention on Utah. In, place, in case you think he's a slam dunk in that state, you might want to think again. Boy, is he running into a buzzsaw of conservatives after this. You okay there, Kurt? We're about to move. Karate helps relieve some of the house buying stress. At least you don't have to worry about homeowner's insurance. Oh, Geico. Geico? Helps with homeowner's insurance? Been doing it for years. I'm calling Geico right now. Good idea. Get to know Geico and see how easy homeowners and renters insurance can be. Do you suffer aches and pains from poor circulation? Are tired, aching legs stopping you from enjoying life? You don't have to suffer any longer. Relieve your aches and pains drug-free with Revitive Medic Circulation Booster. Aching legs from poor circulation may be caused by age, medical conditions, or just being inactive. 
Just one session a day of Revitive Medic and you'll feel back in control of your life. Only Revitive Medic's patented and clinically tested electrical muscle stimulation gets your feet and lower leg muscles pumping. This is vital to actively improve circulation, relieve aches and pains, and strengthen leg muscles as cleared by the FDA. I have tried everything to get rid of my pain and nothing has worked like Revitive. And even better, it's not a drug. My granddaughter asked me to dance with her. Well, I can't <laughs> turn down my granddaughter, right? So I danced two long dances with her and I would never have been able to do that without Revitive. It makes a, a big difference, quality of life. It's nice to have that filling back and have the control back. Revitive Medic is easy to use. Just place your feet on the foot pads and increase the intensity using the remote control. Soon you'll be enjoying relief as Revitive takes your aches and pains away. With no more aches and pains, you could put a real spring in mom's step this Mother's Day. You can try risk-free with our 60-day money-back guarantee and free shipping. If Revitive Medic doesn't relieve your aches and pains, use our free return shipping service for a full refund. That's how confident we are in the power of Revitive. Call 1-800-493-8124 or go to tryrevitive.com. That's 1-800-493-8124. Call now. 1-800-493-8124. You don't have to live with pain. You just have to take the leap and try Revitive. Mesothelioma, it's all we do. With seven offices across the country, we are large enough to take on big corporations. Let us come meet with you. Call us at 1-800-500-1895. That's 1-800-500-1895. Like a supermarket, the dark web is where identity thieves buy and sell your personal information. But now you can protect yourself with Experian. Get a completely free dark web scan to see if your identity has already been compromised. Go to Experian.com slash free scan. All right, uh, Ann Romney, by the way, is in Texas for the funeral of Barbara Bush. Her husband, though, in the battle for his political life to get that Senate seat from Orrin Hatch, uh, was retired and looked like uh, this would be a slam dunk decision. But it's not going to be an easy win as the party uh, meets uh, to convene today. It's a conservative love fest here, and they have mixed views uh, of the man who, who, who triumphed at the Salt Lake City Games back in 2000. Two and got them back on track. Uh, he is facing 11 candidates here, 11 very conservative, feisty candidates who want to deny him the 60% of the vote. That would mean he'd be cleared as the Republican nominee, which in that state almost assuredly means being the next senator. The read now from the Hill's editor in chief, Bob Cusack. Um, Bob, I, I, I was amazed to find, but I guess I shouldn't, given what you know what happened uh, in the past in this state. But when these conservatives gather. Um, they can change things pretty quick, can't they? They can. I mean, this could be a very difficult day for, for Mitt Romney. Obviously, he's the, the favorite. But as you mentioned, he needs 60 percent of the vote. And these delegates are more conservative than the average Utah voter who's pretty conservative. So we're seeing the, the, the claims of, oh, remember Romney care and, and conservative critics going after Mitt Romney. Now, he has enough signatures uh, to actually, even if he doesn't get the 60% threshold, then in a couple of months he would be on the ballot. So in all likelihood, he would get and win the nomination. But we're not there yet. And, and obviously, Mitt Romney wants to seal the deal today. Um, I think this is how Mike Lee came to power, right? I mean, this yes. conservative backwind was what propelled him past, you know, heavier favorites, right? Yes, no, that's right. And, and remember, uh, years ago, Jason Chavitz uh, knocked off uh, an incumbent uh, in that's the right. House. That's how he got to Congress. So uh, this is, you know, this is a, a situation that these uh, delegates, as I mentioned, are very conservative. These <laughs> conventions can be very rowdy. Uh, and it's something that I think it's going to test Mitt Romney today, no doubt about it. And that's why I think he's been going around and saying, I'm more conservative than President Trump on immigration because he is trying to appeal to those delegates. Um, how is his rocky relationship with Donald Trump affair? I mean, obviously, he was quite critical of Donald Trump when he was a candidate for president. The two seemed to, you know, make amends. And uh, there was a period there where Donald Trump was considering him for secretary of state. Yeah. Uh, but how is that relationship going? How is it deemed in, in Utah? Uh, I mean, I think it's one to watch. I mean, Romney is beloved in Utah, no doubt about it. And that's why he is the favorite. But at the same time, uh, there has been a lot of tension between Trump and Romney, to say the least. And 
Uh, remember, Trump was trying to get Orrin Hatch to can you know to seek re-election because he didn't right. want That's Romney right. in the Senate. So, uh, but now they have talked uh, since then. So at least for now, they're getting along. But this is a relationship to watch, especially if he gets to Washington, which I expect he will. You know, I'm amazed. You look back in history, and, and Richard Nixon, after losing to John Kennedy two years later, to try to become a governor of California, where he was prohibitively favored, just given his notoriety. Of course, he lost the famous, you won't have Dick Nixon to kick around anymore. Uh, but others have come back in other venues. Uh, you know, Robert Kennedy uh, moving to New York to make a run for Senate there. Some called him a carpetbagger at the time, became a senator. Uh, Hillary Clinton as well, if you think about it, becoming a senator from New York. Yep. So, so how does you, the fame and notoriety you have as a national figure sort out? I, I guess it depends on the state. I think it depends on the state. I also think uh, if Romney gets to Washington, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, has wants uh, Romney in the Senate and has said he will not be the typical freshman senator, that he's going to get uh, some responsibilities that freshmen n normally don't get. Remember, Romney is over 70. So I, I think this is a bit of a, a political comeback. And I think it's fascinating to see when he gets to Washington, you know, there's been some speculation maybe he would challenge uh, Trump in a primary. Uh, I think that's probably unlikely in 2020. But in politics, Neil, you never know. You never know. If we would have known that, uh, that, you know, Donald Trump and Mitt Romney could patch things up after that raucous campaign, anything is possible, my friend. <laughs> uh, Bob, true. very good seeing you. Thanks for coming in. I always appreciate it. Thanks, Neil. All right, back to Houston right now, where mourners are gathering to say final uh, goodbyes to one Barbara Bush, 1,500 strong, including uh, two former presidents and their families. Uh, and Romney will be there. Uh, this at a time w when the nation looks back to an era where, where both sides would talk to each other, where first ladies uh, would transcend, as they usually do, whatever the politics is of the moment. Remember, this is the week we learned that Laura Bush, in fact, met with Melania Trump, who will be in Houston today. Uh, only months after an election that was very divisive, certainly between the Trumps and the Bushes. So anything is possible, and first ladies are a big reason. More to this. There are those who become complacent when the market is in status quo mode. And those who panic when it isn't. But if you're like us, you know that focus, commitment, and higher expectations will get you to places you've only dreamt of. We are Athene, and we are driven to do more. Fries for 316, please. Thank you. David? What's going on? Oh, hey. That's it? Yeah. Everybody, two seconds. Dear Sebastian, after careful consideration of your application, it is with great pleasure that we offer our congratulations on your acceptance. Through the tuition assistance program, every day McDonald's helps more people go to college. It's part of our commitment to being America's best first job. Arthritis. My back pain. It hurts all over. Wherever you feel pain, it can be managed from here with Quell. From this optimal point, the revolutionary Quell technology accesses the central nervous system. It sends precise neural pulses to the brain that trigger your body's own natural pain blockers. Quell is 100% drug-free, FDA-cleared, and easy to use. And for four out of five people, it works. Reclaim your life from chronic pain. Go to GetQuell.com or find a retailer near you. I have suffered my whole life with muscle cramping. When I tried Therawix, all the cramping went away. I initially applied it at the bottom of my foot and my thigh, and right away, I was able to sleep through the night. Therawix is definitely a breakthrough. It's a little miracle. I can cook again. I can sit at my computer for eight hours a day with my mouse and typing, and I don't hurt. Theraworks Relief is my choice for preventing and relieving muscle cramps. Make it yours, too. Get Theraworks Relief today at theraworksrelief.com. When it's warm, you want to open every door and let fresh air in. The trouble is, you end up letting a lot of mosquitoes in as well. And we all know that mosquitoes can be dangerous. You need Magic Mesh, the new type of screen door that opens easily and then magically closes itself behind you. That makes it great for pets, too. They can come and go as they please. So let the fresh air in and keep those annoying bugs out with Magic Mesh. Magic Mesh, available at these fine retailers. When the day turns to night and the shadows grow long, 
The ADT Yard Sign stands watch over your home and family. With 140 years of tested, trusted, 24-7 protection. Now, get our lowest rate for fast response monitoring at just $28.99 a month. About a dollar a day for ADT, America's most trusted home security provider. Call or go to ADT.com and try risk-free with our six-month money-back guarantee. Taking you back to Houston, Texas right now, as the nation prepares to say goodbye to Barbara Bush, the very popular first lady among uh, one of this nation's most popular. Uh, 1,500 will be cremming that church, uh, and a good many of them will be Bushes. Uh, something passed along by our, our brain room folks here. The Bushes have 17 grandchildren, 14 by direct relation, three step grandchildren, seven great grandchildren, an eighth great grandchild was born only two days after Barbara Bush's death. Uh, so much is said about these things. And uh, when, when anyone, uh, a public note, leaves this earth, for example, the last uh, famous funeral in this church was that for Gene Cernan a couple of years back, the last man to walk on the moon. Uh, so it's an august occasion to remember uh, famous people, and in this case, a famous first lady. Uh, but Barbara Bush, uh, like her husband, echoes to a time when you could reach across the aisle uh, and both sides could find a way to get along with each other. Remember that the very, very divisive election in 1992 uh, when George Bush lost to Bill Clinton, and yet the Clintons and the Bushes forged a very tight, tight bond and a relationship that lasts to this day, doesn't this next fellow know it? Former Hillary Clinton chief strategist Mark Penn. Uh, you know, Mark, I was thinking of you and, and, and looking at your thoughts on this, and of course the, the relationship and the tight one at that between the, these two families, uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton will be there. Um, I discovered this week, uh, my colleague Maria Bartiromo interviewing uh, George W. Bush and Laura, and it was revealed only a couple of months after the Trumps took office that uh, Laura Bush was invited by Melania uh, Trump to, to have tea at the White House, and I guess talk about raising children in the White House. Um, and that surprised me, but, but it, it, it shows that sometimes what you see in the headlines isn't always the case in reality. Well, there, there was a big moment, actually, you know, after President Clinton finished the presidency, he was somewhat under fire for the pardons. And after Katrina happened, when President Bush called him to do joint fundraising for Katrina, that just changed, uh, I think, both their relationship the time the, they spent together, and, and actually then turned around President Clinton's image that had been kind of in the dumps until that moment. So I, I think actually out of that phone call, and I happened to be in Chappaqua when it, when it came, hmm. came a renewed Bush relationship. The one here between senior, uh, and, and I remember that was a very tough election. Everyone thought it was impossible for George was senior to lose so soon after the Iraq war. Uh, he had 80 some odd percent approval rating there. Lo and behold, he loses to this uh, Arkansas governor and people are shocked and aghast. I'm sure that a lot of hurt feelings all the way around. Uh, both sides, you know, very congenial with the other and the, the pageantry and the passing of power and all of that. But then they really developed a bond uh, that continued. Um, I think President Bush, the son, uh, you know, George W. had said that uh, he, suddenly saw Bill Clinton as a brother. Uh, how, how did that happen? Yes, well, that, you know, look, th there was a, almost a different era than what we're facing now. I mean, presidents and former presidents saw themselves as a member of a club. I don't know what's going to happen here after President Trump leaves office uh, and, and whether or not that's going to continue. But I, I think they find themselves you know, in a unique lifestyle, having served public service and, and a bond, I think, that forms among almost all the former presidents and their families. Um, for Barbara Bush and, and looking back at her and her style, her demeanor, I mean, she was who she was. She was very frank. She let it be known. A great protector of her husband. Um, great sense of humor. Uh, would zing uh, when the other jabbed. Um, how important a role historically do you think she played coming as as she did after Nancy Reagan and the Reagan Revolution and all of that? Well, I, I think she played a very, very strong role. I think she was seen very much as the mother and then the grandmother of the country in many ways. I think she embodied 
really a true uh, American spirit. And, and I think that's what people look for, you know, the, the role of First Lady from, from Jackie Kennedy on became elevated in so many different ways, whether it was glamour or, or, whether it, or, or whether I think in the Bush's case, it really was this kind of reassuring commitment to family. Uh, I think that that became very important, I, I think, in terms of comforting the country. Um, this outreach on the part of Melania Trump, who will be at the funeral today, Mark, up to Laura Bush to come and, uh, and have tea with her at the White House and presumably, uh, you know, talk about raising a child, children uh, in, in, in Washington these days and White House, more to the point. Um, obviously, that didn't happen unbeknownst to the president, despite all the friction you hear between he and Jeb Bush and all this. I, I, I'm wondering if we in the media overplay that, that, that once you become president, it isn't nearly that bad, or, or certainly she would not have made the trip. Well, uh, I, I think that uh, I think underlying kind of the, the glare of the media and the images are, are real people for whom I think these relationships actually count. And, and people have to understand that politicians don't do everything for politics. Uh, it's very hard to see what they don't do. But I think, I think particularly bringing up children in the White House, I mean, I, I really can't imagine what children go through today once they really understand the news and the kinds of what they get at school. I mean, it's incredibly difficult. So I think this is a really very positive development that this is happening. All right. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. Michael Trent Squared is the book. I didn't want to talk about other things, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention some of these other developments as well. Thank you for your understanding, Mark Penn, former Hillary Clinton campaign strategist. And I said Michael Trent Squared, the runaway that's settled. That looks at some of these little trends. I don't know if some of those little trends in, include just human decency, um, but, but it, there's a spark of it in Houston today. More into this. Hi kids, I'm Carl and I'm a broker. Do you offer 495 online equity trades? Great question. See, for a full service brokerage like ours, that's tough to do. Schwab does it. Next question. Do you offer a satisfaction guarantee? A what now? A satisfaction guarantee, like Schwab does. What are you teaching these kids? Ask your broker if they offer award-winning full service and low costs backed by a satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like their answer, ask again at Schwab. Since everything's included at Beaches New Grill in Jamaica, you can do all the things you love with the ones you love. Because the best thing you can give your family on vacation is you. Right, my generation. Yeah, we're all about a good time. Yeah, we're all about a good life. You won't believe it until you see this is gonna be a fun ride. Yeah, we're all about Beaches all-inclusive resorts, where you can feel like family again. Call 1-800-BEACHES and save up to 65%. Emmanuel Macron, the interview days before his visit. Politics, partnerships, global security. All of this affects real people. The exclusive is only on Fox News Sunday. Get $30 off at blueapron.com slash cook. For your wedding, you want to put on your best self. Part of that is your smile. My bottom teeth were a struggle for me. Having that perfect smile by the time that we get married. At Smile Direct Club, we believe everyone deserves a smile they'll love. That's why for 60% less than braces, we send invisible aligners directly to you. We straighten most smiles in an average of six months. We didn't have to make any appointments. It was a pretty cool process. Just having that beautiful smile is really special. Get started at SmileDirectClub.com. like a storm that cuts a path it breaks your will it feels like that you think you're lost but you're not lost on as this magnificent species edges closer to extinction hunting continues to rise are you ready to let her go? For a gift of $8 a month, you can symbolically adopt a snow leopard and help protect them and other endangered species and their habitats. Call now or go online to helpwwf.org and receive this adoption kit as thanks. Will you stand by her? Please help us stop the killing today.
Your digestive system has billions of bacteria, but life can throw them off balance. Try Align, the number one doctor-recommended probiotic with a unique strain that realigns your system. Realign yourself with Align. All right, a quick heads up for you. If you are flying uh, next week, you could be running into delays because of an FAA emergency inspection following that deadly engine explosion on uh, Southwest Airlines flight. Uh, Deidre Bolton is back with uh, more on that. What's going on here? Yeah, Neil, understandably, the FAA's directive to inspect these engines is coming after that fan blade on that Southwest airline. It was Boeing 737-700 snapped off mid-flight. It sprayed shrapnel. It punctured the aircraft's fuselage, and that, of course, caused depressurization and killed a passenger. So now the National Transportation Safety Board investigators, they're going around. They are looking for signs of cracking and metal fatigue as where they saw in that engine that had the problem at the point where the blade broke. So the FAA says all of this kind of engine has to be inspected in the next 20 days because it is one of the most popular engines in the world. More than 30,000 units have been produced since 1980. These engines are everywhere. They're in civilian aircraft. They're in military aircraft. And experts say they currently power probably more than 6,700 planes in the world right now. So the ones that are old enough to go through inspection would be about 20 years old. And the FAA wants to basically look at the 350 50 engines they think are in the U.S. and about 680 worldwide. So going forward, this kind of engine is going to be tested every two years for signs of breakdown, hopefully avoiding that incident that we saw earlier this week. So right at this moment, there are no airlines reporting any delays as a result of these inspections. Uh, but as I mentioned, they're going to be taking place over the next 20 days. So that may change. I want to just mention this final note on that Southwest Air passenger who died. The company is giving passengers on that same flight $5,000 checks to the passengers who were aboard that flight. They were equally frightened, I am sure, the plane making an emergency landing. Uh, so the company confirming that earlier. Here's the official statement from Southwest saying that it had sent the checks along with $1,000 travel voucher saying we can confirm the communication and the gesture are authentic and heartfelt. So, Neil, as you know, this is the first accident of this kind since 2009, but for the mother of two who lost her life, I am sure that is of zero consolation to her family. Back to you. Absolutely. Uh, Deidre, thank you very, very much. Deidre Bolton. All right, taking it back to Houston right now, uh, where uh, the mourners are still gathering here. Most have to be in place now within the next few minutes. Uh, other former presidents and their families, dignitaries, a good member, number of the Bush family, also attending some interesting retrospective back on Barbara Bush and the woman they are remembering is her self-deprecating ways that I'm told will come up in Jeb Bush's uh, remembrance of his mom. Uh, when asked that, uh, you know, she might not have been cut from first uh, lady material, she said, even so, my mail tells me a lot of fat, white-haired, wrinkled ladies are tickle pink. More on Barbara Bush after this. Mom, Dad, hi. I had a very minor uh, fender bender tonight in an unreasonably narrow fast food drive through lane. But what a powerful life lesson. And don't worry, I have everything handled. I already spoke to our Allstate agent, and I know that we have accident forgiveness, which is so smart on your guys' part. Like, the fact that they'll just forgive you. Four weeks without the car. Okay, yep, good night. With accident forgiveness, your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Switching to Allstate is worth it. I Phil Swift here for Flex Glue, the super strong rubberized glue. Flex Glue's a powerful adhesive with amazing instant grab. It locks into place and it holds on tight. 